How we doing, Nation? John here. Thank y'all for the support outside of the you know official Prepper Nation channel. I appreciate the support. So I just got done watching the chat replay. Uh, it takes a while for it to load up, and then I go back. I really do go back through and uh, watch the chat replay. It was a blast this morning. Um, I'll be camping next week for a handful of days. I'm not sure if it's going to be the middle of the week or toward the end of the week and the weekend. Um, so I still don't know that. I've invited several people. If they show up, they show up. If not, I'll be camping on my own. Let me unplug this. So anyway, the point of this video is, as I was watching the chat replay and I was re-watching the uh, live stream this morning, we were talking about would it be cool to sit in a room with the founding fathers and, and listen to what they had to say? You know, what would they tell us? What advice would they give us? Somebody in chat put, they just shoot us for allowing it to get this far. <laughs> and I don't disagree with that. But um, Thomas Paine was really, if I'm going to point the finger at somebody, Thomas Paine was the founding father of this country. Now you'll hear, you know, people say Jefferson. You'll hear people say Washington, uh, General Washington, and then President Washington. But Thomas Paine was really the guy that did it. And I'm going to explain why, and then I'm going to explain why it's important, hopefully, to 2022. So Thomas Paine worked for a newspaper. He saw the same thing that we're seeing right now. He saw, of course, they were colonists back then. They weren't Americans, but they were pissed off. Many of them were pissed over the taxes. Many of them hated the fact that they had no voice. They had no representation. The colonies were technically English, but they had no say-so in English law. They were told what to do, and that was it. You don't get a vote. Um, and a lot of the prominent figures, again, like Jefferson and company, they didn't really know what to do about it. They were complaining about it the same way, you know, Rand Paul's complaining, Ted Cruz is complaining, DeSantis, Trump, they're all complaining. But nobody seems to step up and do anything about it. And so Thomas Paine, back in his time, he saw this, and he decided, I'm going to try and nudge him in the right direction. And he wrote a series of pamphlets. And one of them, it's now comprised, it's called Common Sense. You can buy it at your local bookstore. It's an awesome read. Um, but in this, he makes an argument for freedom. You know, he, he basically states the obvious. Why are we continuing to put up with tyranny? Why are we, we should be free men and women. Why are we not free? Um, it's starting to rain. So he, what he does, he doesn't put his name on the, these things initially because he's afraid. Of course, they'll, they'll try him for treason and hang him. Instead, he prints off a bunch of copies and he just leaves them in public areas and the colonists get a hold of them. And the colonists begin to read this. The word starts to spread and it spreads all the way to, you know, Jefferson, Washington, Monroe, all these people. And they read it and they're like, you know what? Whoever wrote this is correct. We need to do something about it. And as this movement gains momentum, uh, Thomas Paine kind of outs himself. He says, I wrote it. You know, I'll help you in whatever way I can. And thus you have the Revolutionary War. So... A lot of people know this. A lot of people know about Thomas Paine and common sense. What a lot of people don't know is less than 20 years later, Thomas Paine wrote a second uh, series of, again, pamphlets where he said he regretted doing it. He regretted the Revolutionary War. He regretted the United States earning its freedom, and he begins to point at problems that he sees within the United States that are ultimately going to end the United States of America. He was a really smart guy. And so what he saw was a country that wanted to be free or the colonies wanted to be free so bad that they were willing to stand up and they were willing to fight for it no matter what. And they earned their independence. And then he goes on to explain once they were independent, they really didn't know what to do with it. You know, they... They were, it wasn't given to them, but they earned a fresh start on a silver platter, if you will. And what he saw was 
a bunch of bickering and a bunch of arguing over nonsense, he could see the political party start to form, and he said political parties are going to ruin this country. This was a huge mistake uh, because the conservatives and the Christians are over here and the Puritans, and then you have the, uh, you know, even during that time, the liberals and the, they called them free thinkers, and the secular crowd is over here and they want uh, liberal policies. And so you already start to see this clash. And what he was saying was, I think, this is my interpretation, he's saying that once the, the fighting is over, you kind of hit this period of calm. And it's during this period of calm that you find out that men inherently are evil and they're corrupt. And once money and power gets involved, the will of the American people goes out the window. And he says this is going to be the death of the United States. Now, he's, and I'm not pushing for it either. He wasn't pushing for tyranny. He wasn't saying we should have stayed with England, but he's saying at the same time, at least with England, we were unified. We might have been getting pointed at and being told what to do, but there was no division. There was no rift between citizens the way there was 20 years after the Revolutionary War, and quite frankly, the way it's happening right now. The rift is it's unrepairable. And he, he called it. He said, this is going to happen. Our political parties are going to do us in. There's too much power involved. And so it, I don't know why this came to me when I was going through the chat replay and everything, but I said, you know, I really want to talk about this this morning because we're seeing the same thing. We're seeing our politicians who have the clout who are scared to do anything about it. They're talking about freedom. They're talking about tyranny. Some of them are, are mentioning a national divorce. And I think we're going to get to a point where somebody's going to nudge them. It ain't going to be me. Heads up. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Somebody is eventually going to nudge them in the right direction. And they're going to say, we need to fight for our independence. And a lot of people are going to be okay with this. And, and honestly, they should be because I don't like the way the, the, uh, the direction the country's headed in, what's left of the country. But at the same time, we need to remember what Thomas Paine said many moons ago. And that is, once the fighting's over, even if we earn our independence, uh, you know, let's say half the country leaves and they go their separate way. And there's a war and, and they fight and they earn their independence. Um, eventually, because of greed and corruption and a hunger for power, eventually that country is going to forget why they fought. And they're going to start, you're going to start to see that division once again. It's a never ending cycle is what he was arguing. And he said, you know, in the United States, originally we created the greatest country that this world has ever seen, the freest country this world has ever seen. And as he wrote his second series of pamphlets, he said he regretted it because we actually created a monster. People don't know what to do with that kind of freedom. Uh, it, it corrupts them, and people don't get along enough to enjoy that freedom. Wouldn't it be something if we just all focused on the important stuff, got rid of the nonsense, and just came together, and we were the United States of America? But he was telling us back then it's never going to work. He didn't call the corporations out by name, but he's basically, even back then, this is before the Industrial Revolution, he's saying eventually companies are going to get so powerful, they're going to be able to influence politicians, and they're going to be able to control the two parties. And now we see this, you know, we see the, uh, for example, the gun industry and the auto industry and the oil industry, heavily conservative. And then we see companies like um, Silicon Valley, companies like Disney controlling the left pretty much entirely. And this is a huge problem. We can't print our way out of where this country's headed. But if you're to believe Thomas Paine, we can't fight our way out of it either because eventually it's going to repeat itself. So I don't know. These are just my thoughts. I'm rambling, but uh, these are my thoughts this morning. It was a really interesting thing that popped up in chat, and I would love to hear your thoughts. What are the solutions for, for the United States of America moving forward? How do we salvage this country if it's by way of civil war?
how do we avoid making the same mistakes? I'm asking y'all because I truly don't know. Um, But anyway, I appreciate the support. Thank y'all for listening and God bless.